Welcome back to the Stuff or Whatever podcast. Your host Brian or B. Quanchi here. And yeah, just another week, another episode. It's funny, um, just even though this isn't really a big, what you want to call it, like a big setup or a big operation. But it's funny that when it gets up to do content, whether it's be streaming or doing the podcast, I feel like one of my dogs knows. And he'll just be like whining, like wanting to go outside or wanting to eat or something like that. So sometimes you might hear my dog whine, but I think I have this all settled for now. So sometimes you might notice some whining, I think maybe on streams um, versus podcasts, but you may notice it. But also with, with daylight savings, I think they even want to eat earlier than they typically do. Even though I typically feed them later in the evening, they didn't want to record or stream stuff. But the fun uh, fun fact for you, I do live in Arizona, and in Arizona, we don't do daylight savings, so we don't turn back the clocks. It's not too bad, it's just a little frustrating when it comes to like TV broadcast and other things. Too. Like when content's being uploaded on YouTube, because I do watch a lot of YouTube, it's always delayed an hour. And I'm, I almost think like, oh my god, they like didn't upload content. Oh wait, I had to wait an additional hour. But fun stuff, but... When I, usually when I put content on YouTube, I schedule it or schedule tweets for this or that. It's um, based on local time, it seems like. So I never have to worry about like my content being posted differently. Although, if you do follow, and you should subscribe, follow, comment, like, ring that bell. Which I, I don't care about the bell too much. But yeah, you may notice content being released an hour early. Although I don't. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I, I, I sometimes talk about growth on a channel. It seems kind of weird because I don't really have the real, like, engagement in a sense in terms of, like, comments and things like that. Oops, sorry. I, I was missing with the microphone because it was kind of uh, loose if that picked up. But, yeah, just getting recorded for the week. And also, like I mentioned with streaming, I wanted to mention one thing is that I kind of excited because I uh, figured out a problem I had. I even posted this on Twitter, you know. And again, it's at Bequanchi on all the social medias. I always have the links in the description of videos, on the bouts of whatever you're watching, either on Twitch, YouTube, and all that. But I was wanting to play this um, MS DOS game that I remember as a kid called Raptor, called The Shadows, and I had so much issues getting it to work. I'll probably explain more on stream. Um, the stream is probably going to be on... I'm going to stream tonight as I'm recording, although the VOD will be uploaded on Saturday. That's why I usually try to plan to have the VODs up in a timely basis, but not like to stack together with that upload so it gets a little cumbersome. I mean, also, um, I did upload a stream highlights. I make it in the habit of doing that. Even though maybe some stuff isn't quite highlight worthy, but just like some compilation, the variety of uh, previews of what I stream on Twitch. As well, I did also finish Super Mario RPG. And I have a playlist for that as well, but you can watch the uh, playthrough. And I do have a boss compilation coming up for that soon. And it's kind of weird talking about this. <laughs> I don't know who really cares or anything like that, but sometimes it's quite fun to just have like little stuff to keep you busy or. Maybe even creative, and if you call it that. But yeah, just been doing things like that. Oh yeah, and I want to mention I kind of want to do more like random games from what I remember as a kid, kind of obscure stuff because I have some ideas. So I do plan on doing another like actual game series because I'm still kind of debating on like doing like games to actually finish like beat incomplete versus games doing one-offs and things like that i was trying to do more casual games too i did put peggle up there and have some bejeweled as well some bejeweled games i'm thinking maybe doing that just to see how it performs because i feel like that peggle performs a little bit better just a little behind the thing stuff and i feel like when i did the bejeweled four years ago that's long history but i put an, an archive of that on the channel and i think that's performing a little bit better but i think the archive is going to go down at the end of the year so this that but some random things i wanted to talk about this episode is uh, God, i don't want to feel like i'm repeating myself but 
I, I don't know, I'm sure I really just paid attention last episode, but um, I'm in the habit of using my deep fryer a little bit more. I was like deep fryer, just like a small little countertop one, so it's not like a big like one. But ever since I got it, like I, that's what I do my fries. Like unless I do like drive through and stuff like that, I would actually get fresh potatoes, cut them up with like a slicer, so it's a, a convenient too. But I would do French fries in the fryer, and it turned out a lot better. Like back in the day, I would just do whatever frozen fries and put them in the oven. Okay, I just had a freak flat fat. Uh, flashback is i'm not sure if they still make those but there was like microwavable fries it has like the little like you peel out the box and flip it open it's like a not like tin foil but it's kind of like a reflective thing or a crisp or stuff like you do fries in a microwave like for uh serving for one i'm sure if anyone remembers that i'm not talking about the crappy ones that come like with kids cuisine or whatever frozen meals but I think it was that big one, Orida or whatever, had that we can actually make like French fries in the microwave, and it would be decent, like compared to actually baking in the oven. I'm going to that, like ever since I got the, actually I got through. This is my I'm on my second deep fryer. I don't have an air fryer. I haven't played around with that, so I'm not sure how different it is in terms of what you can cook, what you can't cook, but. Is it fun? Like I, I also like if I cut up potatoes too, like do uh, country star hash browns or appetizers too, like whatever. Like I feel like TGI Fridays have a lot of ones in the frozen section at grocery stores, but stuff like that. Like if you can like bake it or microwave it, I, I just put a deep fry. It's a lot quicker. It feels like and it's good maybe because it's oily and greasy and bad for you. But other stuff I do with my deep fryer is what I recently get in the habit of is doing uh, tortilla chips. Like I'll have some extra corn tortillas. Um, like for if I had tacos on a night, like um, I do have a what you want to call it, the Instapot, but um, knock off like pressure cooker. I tend to do chicken in that, so it's just easy to shred up and do chicken tacos. And if I have extra tortillas, like I cut them up into fours and fry them up and then once it, it takes to like maybe a few minutes and then dump them out a little salt and pepper and they are like really good tortilla chips i like i said i thought i said i said this before in the past because i thought i mentioned on the podcast but who's listening who cares but i swear to god making tortilla chips that way is better than any tortilla chips i had store bought very similar if you go to like a good restaurant and you get uh those uh hot tortilla chips uh table side but yeah i've been in the habit of doing that just if i have salsa or queso or whatever cheese dip or whatever but making just cutting up tortillas and frying them is like really freaking good and i wanted to mention um this was inspired because i uh, went to like a sports bar grill whatever um I would just say it's, it's called Zips. I'm not sure if there's a big chain, but I have a few locations to where I live. But they have these cheese sticks appetizers, but they like wrap them in um, egg roll wrappers. It's different. Like it's, it has a nice, really good crunch to it. It's like, oh, that'd be easy to make. So you get egg roll wrappers and mozzarella sticks, cheese sticks, wrap them up and deep fry them and then have like pizza sauce uh, or marinara sauce to dip it in. I noticed uh, if you give it a little like water rinse, like with a brush or a paper towel, um, it I'm not sure if it's like starch or something like that or whatever. Because if you dump the egg rolls, a lot more like the big puffy kind when they fry, like they puff up. But if you like, kind of rinse it off a little bit, or I don't want to say like uh, have run water right under them, but kind of like put a little water to kind of brush it off. It gets not as puffy and it's kind of like more of those spring rolls or whatever you want to call it so I kind of like it when it's not too too puffy uh it's really good and it's like because i had times when i bought like the like i guess with the appetizers like cheese sticks and like oh this sounds good and all of a sudden like it breaks from the batter and the cheese kind of seeps out and then it gets on the basket and you have to like really clean it out but yeah taking the other fried stuff like anything that uh can be fried that's like prepared in a frozen section deep fry is like awesome for that but i'm sure like the air fryer is just as good probably even more so but i don't know it's a little blurb talking about my little food items 
So one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, mobile games that I play on my phone. I feel like I maybe talked about this a little bit in the past, like maybe my more gaming-focused podcast episode. But some things I've been kind of playing more of. Um, I'm pretty sure I talked about Final Fantasy Record Keeper is one of my favorites, so I always keep on playing that. It's uh, very classic to like old Final Fantasy games. Like it does like this super nest like graphics or look, but pretty much has like characters from all the game. They do have that active battle system. Uh, I even long back in the day, I deleted a video, but I did like my review of it. I was talking about it. But it's still going strong. I feel like the uh, add stuff to it a lot too. And it's funny the company that uh, makes that or whatever you want to call it, uh, DNA. He also done uh, Pokemon Masters EX. I think that's what it's called now. And I've been playing that too because it's funny that that game I had a hard time playing because this wasn't compatible with some of my older devices and phones. And then suddenly, yep, I can actually play it now. So pretty cool. Like, um, I don't know. I feel I don't they, like I said they're both from DNA. But I feel like Pokemon Mass is a little bit more gross when it comes to like microtransactions. Because I feel like it doesn't give you enough resources to do stuff like do your draws. The gotcha mechanic is getting little Pokemon Sync pairs. And uh, Record Keeper has that too. And I feel like with Record Keeper, I never feel like the real need to like put money to a game. I think I put a few bucks now and then. Like, not recently, but in the past, a record. But um, the Pokemon Masters game, like I feel like the like this, a lot of these games, you know, they're based on stamina. Like if you want to play a round or level or whatever, it costs this much stamina. It recharges over time, but you can pay to make it or use your in-game resources. But of course, if you wanted that, you can pay. I think the draw thing is a little bit more annoying because a little history on the record keep of the Final Fantasy one. The more gotcha mechanic is based off what they call relics, which is typically like. A weapon or armor but it would be more so that that weapon armor can grant a really good ability like they have like these kind of like limit breaks for final fantasy but they get like they really you know expand on them and do more with it over time but i've seen abilities and stuff like that too so that's where you really want to get these certain relics for, for especially for certain characters in certain realms like i can go all day talking about record keeper but i noticed over time they change it that when you do a draw you're guaranteed at least one rare relic. Versus, I remember the past ones like they weren't in the back in the day. Uh, I think that it's been five years since that game's been out. Back in the day, like the unlucky draw, because you get, get eleven draws if if you do like fifty of the end game mythical currency, and if you do like the eleven draw and all like because either like three stars or six or seven now, because how the game you know evolved and gone over time, but you can get like back in the day an eleven times draw of what uh, the three times relic and just that, and we call it like a pearl necklace because I'll be like white orbs, but it's kind of fun too. Like you can become like rainbows or like all that. But I do re- really strongly recommend Record Keeper. But I bring that up because Pokemon Masters they don't do that. There's a chance if you do like the, I think it's eleven times. I forget how many if you do like the big draw. Like, I, I just remember it takes like three thousand gems. But you do that, there's a chance you cannot get a rare uh, sync pair. And that's kind of a bummer, too. Like, But there's some benefits, too, too. Like, if you uh, repeat draws, you get um, that sync pair can get a little bit stronger with its, like, move sync level. I forget. And if that's capped out, you get, like, these little tickets to improve potential, whatever. But yeah, I've been kind of having fun with that, but not taking it too seriously. Although I feel, I feel like, especially like Pokemon being more of a kid's game, not sure how many of them like really, you know, put money in that game. But yeah, because this is a, a side story uh, with microtransactions. Not quite mobile, but this is like one of my moments where I was like dumbfounded in terms of how much kids would put money into like games for that are kind of like temporary, like. More specifically, it had to do with Fortnite and skins and stuff like that. Because with those, those don't even impact the game versus like the Pokemon or like a lot of mobile gaming it does in the sense that, hey, you may get this unique unit or armor or play more or whatever. 
there's a lot of different stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if other people covered that before in like more detail in terms of like spending in mobile gaming. But going back to Fortnite, I remember it was one Christmas, um, my nephew got a PlayStation 4. Yeah, it had to be a PlayStation 4 because 5 didn't come out yet. And then he got like the uh, a gift card for like the PlayStation Store. I believe it was like a fifty dollar one, and he got Fortnite on it. The funny thing is, he already has Fortnite on Switch and Xbox with like different accounts, but he um, got it for PlayStation. And then like within like less than a minute, he redeemed his uh, gift card and bought like the they had like a character pack. An extra V bucks to buy skins and stuff like that. So within minutes, like fifty dollars were just like burned and like what? Like have you ever seen that meme of like that old? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a, I don't want to sound mean, but I'm not sure if it's a man or a woman. But if you know the meme, like it says what W A T, like that what? That was like my face. But yeah, it's weird how like so many people can dump money to games and. And it's like some uh, recent criticism, like for Pokemon Unite, like how the skins cost and stuff like that too. But yeah, I'm kind of enjoying that. I, and of course, I do play Pokemon Go. That's always a fun one. I'm kind of tempted to play the Pikmin Bloom one. Um, I haven't even installed that. I really checked it out. I'm kind of curious about that because with my actual job, I do. I'm on my feet a lot. It's uh, funny because with Pokemon Go, I hatch a couple of eggs a day, like. I definitely maxed out that little rewards for your week for walking. So I'm kind of wondering if I do Pikmin Bloom. Like if I, uh, I feel like that has, it's the same company, Niantic, that does Pokemon Go, that does Pikmin Bloom. I'm just kind of curious of how much I can get out of that. How similar it is to Pokemon Go. Because I'm sure it's different in the sense that it's different franchises, different mechanics. And I also get to be curious about... Um, Pikmin 4, because I feel like that's been in development hell for years. Was that... I'm trying to think when that was announced. Like, if that was Wii U when it was announced or what. But it's kind of funny, because I know Nintendo last year that the the, the Pikmin 3 uh, remaster, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not sure if they're going to, like, focus and say, hey, if this really gets popular trends or the franchise starts getting a whole lot more life into it. Maybe Pikmin 4... Be huge sooner than we think, but I was kind of surprised no news on that. And then some other mobile game that I kind of gave up on that I played before there was um, final another Final Fantasy one. Don't check out all the Brave. I haven't checked that one, but I heard that one's pretty bad when it comes to like microtransaction. But one well, that was pretty cool, but I kind of grew out of it or just out of just kind of face off is Final Fantasy Brave XVS. I believe it's the same company that does like that Brave Frontier, which feels like a really old classic like mobile game. But it's like a little bit more turn based for Final Fantasy. And it's really cool. I did like it a lot. But I feel like over time, like the gotcha mechanic was about like newest units and stuff like that. So other units would be kind of outdated and things like that. And you're watching videos of like someone doing like pulls and stuff like that. And it's like, Funny how much money you spend in that unit is pretty much obsolete. Because I just you know, like you get to the point that you just really have to grind for resources, whether it be pulling the same unit multiple, multiple times so you can like awaken it and then max out. And like Neo Awakening, I think, was the newest thing before I kind of dropped off on that. It's pretty cool. I would honestly like to see if they ever did like a console version of that just to get to recap the game's story. Because it was kind of neat. I did kind of like drop off the story to like, keep on hitting skip. You know, the couple seasons of that. But it's pretty because it did make a lot of unique characters for the game itself. But then you had all these classic Final Fantasy characters throughout the franchise and all that. So it's kind of cool. I had kind of mixed feelings with that. But I know, like, some of the events and, like, endgame stuff. I don't know if you call it endgame. But the beacon's, like, so, so difficult. And I'm good at, like, maxing out stuff and getting good equipment. And it kind of felt like... Am I missing something? Am I stupid? Kind of thing when it came to like some of the bosses. I know there's different strategies like when it comes to, like debuffing and chain. End of that game, you can chain your um, attacks and heads and stuff like that. But it just kind of feel like either the easier stuff was just too easy and the harder stuff was just insanely hard or I just didn't get it. 
and just the thing like the getting it's kind of like chasing the flavor of the week and stuff like that like if you don't have the newest units and stuff like that you're at a disadvantage and if you don't have that game resources to get it then you can pay for it which eh. but yeah and then two other ones i want to talk about uh i did play a little bit of it the it's based on short art online i think memory defrag is the name of it that was a little kind of fun because a little bit more actiony in terms of the like the touchscreen and presses and stuff like that. But I felt like kind of like the Brave X like some like higher tiers of the events and stuff like that is still insanely hard. We just feel like am I missing something? Am I stupid? And I also had to, like the thing where if you want to really max out your characters like stats or things like that, you have to like be really lucky to get the resources or spend money and. Yeah, it just kind of seemed frustrating and stuff like that. Like when it, I think a lot of games are like that, but it kind of like easy to play at first, and then all of a sudden they get harder and kind of like get you to make those in-game purchases. But yeah, it was kind of neat, but I kind of deleted that one and not playing that. And then the big one, uh, I'm not sure how. Yeah, I'm sure it's keep. I, I think it like on Twitter and stuff like that too, in, in terms of like ads and stuff like that. But Fire Emblem Heroes is Heroes the uh, mobile game. Yeah, that's a really fun one. It's very classic. It's getting a little bit more simpler for Fire Emblem in terms of the size of the battlefield. So I feel like it's a really, really cool mobile game for people curious about the Fire Emblem franchise and things like that. But I just kind of got old of it, got tired of it. Because, like, it's I, I think kind of similar to what you said with uh, Brave XPS is that it would be chasing the newest characters. Sometimes the new characters are just, like, just as good. Or, like, you have to get those really resources to power them up to the max. Because if you try to fight, like, certain difficulties, it's, like, almost impossible. Again, I don't like that feeling playing these mobile games. And, like, am I an idiot or am I missing something? And bouncing around, um, I know with uh, Record Keeper, there's some really hard dungeons, like, I can't even beat. But it feels like they added so much to the game that you can still kind of grind in a way. Then you kind of max out certain stats and, yeah... I don't want to get like too involved in like talking about a game in so much details, but added stuff like record spheres and magia crystals and uh, crystal water and stuff like that to like boost your characters even further. Even with those relics and soul breaks, what they call limit breaks, whatever, add to your character stats. So there's like different ways to like keep on growing without it seeming too impossible. But even the daily stuff is kind of fun too. But with Fire Emblem, like. I don't know, it just got old for me and all that. But I do, out of the games I like, quit playing or uninstalled and stuff like that, the Fire Emblem one is still a really fun one, especially if you're kind of curious about that franchise or that game. But yeah, I'm a little blurb about mobile gaming. Okay, then for this segment of the podcast, I wanted to bring back the da-da-da-da, whatever report. So this uh, fun news stories have been fun. I have kind of a backlog, so kind of getting to catch up on them. This is a new story. Um, for now, I'm just going to go over them uh, on the podcast. But if it's like a big need or I'm almost tempted to like make his own little video, but I don't feel like I had that popularity, but I like to make the efforts like posting links and stuff like that. But let's get over to the whatever report. So the first uh, story is about Bud Light Seltzer. And basically they're having this variety pack called the uh, Ugly Sweater Pack and have different flavors. And some of them seem uh, good. Like there's a sugar plum flavor. There's like mixed berry, cranberry, plum flavors. There's just a plain cranberry one, like a sweet and tart cranberry one. But this is when it gets a little bit weird. Is that they have a a cherry cordial. Like those cherry, uh, chocolate covered cherry candies. So it has cherry and chocolate flavors. And the most interesting one it's called Seltzer Nog. It has cinnamon and vanilla flavors to mimic classic eggnog. So I don't think it has like the actual like, dairy like eggnog flavor, just more like cinnamon and vanilla. But it's kind of weird. I can think of eggnog hard seltzer. That doesn't sound good, but no, it's it exists. It's out there. I guess according to the article I came across, the started november 1st so it should already be out but they have like holiday flavors and i don't know it sounds interesting like it would need here like you think of eggnog seltzer like Ugh. but no it's just like some of the spices and stuff like that too so it's not as bad 
Like the Trigger Plume sounds interesting, although I don't really like seltzers or in general very the hard or um, sparkling water and stuff like that. I don't know. It's kind of, to me, it always feels like it's uh, drinking, uh, what you want to call it, like uh, dish soap, like water with dish soap in it. So I've never really been a fan of like sparkling waters and seltzers and stuff like that, but that exists. And for the next story, uh, the Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary is adding 455 new words and definitions for 2021. And going through this article, some stuff, it's some abbreviations and online cultures are part of it, like the adding uh, TB, TBH for to be honest or FTW for the win. But also adding, am I right? As in that little... I, I guess it's kind of meme-ish, but that it's spelled A M I R I T E, which is like the one word, but it's for the phrase "Am I right?" So "Am I right?" is going to be in the dictionary. Some stuff like even "copy pasta" is going to have a definition. A, a ghost kitchen is being added to it, um, as well as air fryer and horchata, which I'm surprised horchata is not in the dictionary already. Not that. And also from pop culture, the adding otaku and dad bod to the dictionary. But yeah, yeah, more stuff. To add. I'm, I'm kind of curious how much they add to the dictionary yearly and stuff like that. But I think, you know, based on how these words are used, how often, like how much of an impact in our culture they are. But yeah, there's um, more words added to the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Okay, in this next story, uh, going back to kind of a holiday th- theme, is this is, has to do with uh, new flavors of candy canes. Well, I'm not sure how new they are. Um, I guess it's from a company called Archie McPhee's, and they do kind of more novelty uh, candy canes and stuff like that. It's like one of the things that they make flavors like, why would you do that kind of thing? Um, but I just came across this, they're doing hot dog candy canes. So that's going to be a thing i guess apparently they did flavors before like mac and cheese shiitake mushrooms a clam <laughs> pickle but yeah they're also doing uh hot dogs and yeah the name of the company is archie mcfees and i guess you can order them online i'm not i haven't seen them in stores for some reason like the pickle one sounds familiar to me but yeah you can get a hot dog candy cane okay and this is kind of a weird but kind of gross story is that a, a a woman blows out a giant burger and they realize this burger is actually 20 years old the reason they found that out because it was a bead that she had stuck in her nose for 20 years and i guess maybe there was a tiktok i'm just kind of reading the article but um the woman she's 23 so she had uh, this stuff in her nose for three years when she was three years of age and I guess she says she had a memory of it but it's like one of the things like you don't really remember it and stuff like that too but kind of like recalling that's might have happened I'm not sure why it didn't like become an issue within those 20 years but yeah I've seen pictures it looks <laughs> it looks kind of gross like it's a little crazy I guess it could look grosser than when you kind of think about 20 year in her nose but crazy but it's like a little uh blue bead or something like that um but yeah i guess she, she, what happened is they had a really bad sinus affection and then um nose were completely congested and oh yeah i guess they it was so bad they kind of tried to get a little camera or something to look at it but yeah crazy uh 20 year old burger which i don't think that really counts since most of the I guess burger is the bead, but crazy. And this is an, an interesting story for the whatever report. Uh, basically, this guy uh, saved money eating all his meals at Six Flags. So kind of like the loophole, whatever. But basically, like the Six Flag annual pass would be $150 a year. And part of that was free parking and two meals a day. And look at the article. He's 33 in an article, but I guess he's been doing it for seven years since 2014. With all the money he saved, like he didn't even do grocery shopping. 
maybe he lived close to uh, the Six Flags. I haven't like read like too much into it in terms of all the specific details. But he said with all the money he saved, he was able to pay off his student loans and I guess even get married and all that. And maybe it's not like the best diet, but uh, yeah, because I'm just looking at our calls and said uh, his coworker spends like $1,500 a month on eating out. And basically he spent a hundred, a thousand times less than that a year. Oh my God, that that's crazy. Like, I don't even like focus on like how much I spend on groceries and I eat out a lot too. But I guess maybe six years, or six or seven years, but he kept on like eating Six Flags food and all that and saved so much money. So, wow, that's crazy and maybe a good way to hustle, but yeah, very interesting. I'm not sure if that's going to trend or not in terms of doing like a uh, amusement park uh, diet or whatever. I'm not sure how that affected, because uh, it seemed like this article, let me see, it was posted me recently because they mentioned like it started in 2014 so at least because end of covid last year affected a lot of um theme parks and stuff like that too but basically kind of use the six flags like dining pass or uh, annual pass whatever but i don't see it really okay two weeks ago from when i'm recording this so pretty recent but yeah and for the last story for the whatever report is about chicken wings and basically, uh, a son, uh, son is arrested after shooting his dad over getting the wrong order of chicken wings. And if I provide more de- de- uh, more details about it, it, the son was 30 years of age. And just take a moment to kind of guess what state could this possibly happen in where a 30-year-old son shoots at his dad for getting the wrong chicken wings order. If you guess Florida, you are actually wrong this time. It actually took place in Utah and Bountiful, Utah. The son's name was uh, Alika Sulifu. I'm probably butchered that, but not too much of the story. Like um, uh, he, the father was able to duck and he missed his father. I guess the bullet got stuck in the neighbor's uh, dishwasher, like the back, so no one was really injured. And he was able to kind of wrestle his son down and get the gun from him, like retrieve the firearm, all that. So, but the story doesn't mention the most important detail. It has what type of chicken wings did he get? Like it doesn't mention much detail about the chicken wings besides they are um, wrong. And I'm not sure if it's like just a little wrong flavor. It just is the wrong variety. So I'm wondering like what the son wanted and what he got. Because to me, any chicken wing is a good chicken wing. You know, can't be too upset with that. But apparently this guy was. So crazy. So moral of the story, don't shoot anyone over chicken wings. It's just not worth it. But yeah, this it's probably something that had to be messed up with the son, if it's even his father and stuff like that too. But yeah, that does it for the whatever report for this week. And I think almost wrapping up this podcast i had more kind of want to talk about but i didn't want to get things too long and i have to stream soon because i had a little late start but i thought i'll end this on a fun maybe fun not that fun but story about how a broke a game boy when i was a child so and i'm talking about that old school game boys like the green screen uh white almost the size of a brick those old school game boys Basically, this was when uh, Pokemon came out. I'm trying to think how long. I'm not sure if this was my first run of. I, I'm pretty sure it was my first run of Pokemon Red. That I got the red version. But I remember getting to the point of the game of. I was getting to the point of the game where I was catching the legendary birds. And it was uh, time to catch Moltres. And with a lot of catching them, you pretty much had to do like a status effect. I'm not sure how. I think with new versions, it, the. I'm not sure, like, you've probably seen articles or stuff like that, too, if you looked into, like, what affects the catch rate of Pokemon and stuff like that, too. Pretty much, like, the thing was, at least in my mindset, pretty much pretty more with the first generation, that if you want to catch a legendary, you had to put it to sleep and stuff like that. So my Pokemon that I wanted to use to put them to sleep was Wigglytuff, and you sing to put Moltres to sleep. But the thing was, Moltres was way too fast, 
So every time I tried to use Wigglytuff, Moltres would use the move Fire Spin, and back in the day when he'd use like a move like that, your Pokemon couldn't move or couldn't act, so I couldn't use the Sleep, and kept on getting Fire Spin and Fire Spin. I got so frustrated. What happened is I got so angry that I just smashed the uh, Game Boy uh, on my forehead and all that. And I think it took a couple uh, whacks on my head. I don't know. I feel like some like crazy like mental child just uh, t- retelling the story, but basically smashed it on my head and broke the Game Boy. And I, I'm pretty sure uh, nothing really, at least physically bad, happened to me. I, I think I remember feeling a little dizzy afterwards, but I don't think like any like trauma or damage and stuff like that. I sometimes forget the letter B, but not besides that, not too much but this is a funny story that because of pokemon i smashed a game boy over my head and it was like uh if you've seen the article i think there was someone in the military or something the army that had that one game boy that was in like a, a, a grenade explosion or something like that i feel like a, like a military game boy um, thing because those things can withstand a lot but apparently my head can take out a game boy but yeah i think that does it for this podcast and yeah, so um, I always appreciate if you like, comment, subscribe, all that. Follow me on all the social media like Twitter and Twitch. And yeah, I'll help everyone's having a good day and take care.